it on? Yes. Hi. Um, I'll keep this short and sweet, and uh, I come from this. It's interesting, Dr. DeMarco is my dentist, so we'll have to have an issue. <laughs> I gave him a big, a big kiss. I gave him a big kiss on his head tonight when I came in. We'll see whether or not he still allows me to be his patient after we're done tonight, but uh, certainly it makes for an interesting, uh, an interesting place to be sitting right now. I saw him and I thought, oh darn, uh, I thought I could squeak in and do this on my own. Where to start on this issue? By the way, I have to say I'm coming here as a, as a resident of the city of Windsor and as a mom of, of a couple of kids. I never really gave it much thought, the whole issue of uh, fluoridation in Windsor and Essex County, but since it came to light, I've had an opportunity to read the pros and cons. I've listened to the discussions on AM 800. I've read about them in the Windsor Star. I've Googled them as well. I'm getting a plug in. Uh, and also on CTV. Now, throughout the debate, there are several things I've noticed. First being that this is a very complex issue. And I would say one that I certainly have limited knowledge about. Uh, but both sides have presented a, you know, an abundance of information surrounding the issue. Now, those in favor, of, uh, in favor of fluoridation, the health agencies, dental associations, and the like, have made sure to include reports and studies from researchers and medical doctors and government agencies and departments that suggest the benefits outweigh the risk. And those opposed can provide a plethora of information, some of it quite startling, about the negative health effects of long-term exposure. Uh, we've already heard some of those expressed, so I don't need to get into that tonight. From what I've read, some of the opponents who are speaking out now were one-time supporters of fluoridation. So for an average citizen, that's a little bit confusing. Obviously, people uh, like experts have an opportunity to change their minds as perhaps new information becomes available to them. I fall into that core category. As I mentioned off the top, I never really gave it much thought, but after trying to educate myself and reading as much as I could on the issue, I believe we need to stop the practice. The one thing I've noticed is that yes, while there is evidence to suggest that fluoridation does address, address tooth decay in some cases, not nearly enough research has been done to investigate the negative effects, the long-term effects, the accumulative effects on our health. I respect the research and information provided by both sides. <laughs> However, I feel more research needs to be done to satisfy all. When we talk about dental tooth decay rates, we must also talk about diet and lifestyle. An abundance of sugary treats is the norm for many families today. Many kids are fed a steady diet of pop and juice and sweetened cereal and cookies and so on. So we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the diet and the sugar that's included in many of our food items today. Doug Schmidt of the Windsor Star said it best when he wrote in good science and good public health, there is a thing called precautionary principle. And if there's any doubt or question, then don't do it. And we shouldn't be doing it because there is doubt and there are questions. And it shouldn't matter where those questions are coming from. Healthcare professionals or the public at large. With the money saved by ending the fluoridation practice, I understand it's about $150,000 this community and our health unit could still provide education and dental care for those children who need it. We do have existing programs in place and can add to those programs and education along the lines of diet and necessary food items with less sugar may also be part of it. For those city councillors in attendance tonight who will vote on the issue, please do so keeping in mind the citizens of the city of Windsor. While other municipalities may use our water supply, we should not base our decisions on the desires of those municipalities as they do not make decisions for their residents on, based on what we in the city of Windsor may or may not want. And finally, I'll wrap up with this. Windsor, of course, as you mentioned, Bill, off the beginning, is not alone when it comes to dealing with this issue. The residents of towns and cities and many are revisiting the issue of fluoridation. Had it not been for a grassroots organization of concerned residents against the process, we might not be talking about it at all. <coughs> the status quo would remain, but the status quo is not always acceptable. And if fluoridation is so beneficial in the year 2012, why aren't citizen organizations in towns like Leamington and Kingsville and others standing up calling for its implementation just as some of us in Windsor are calling for its elimination? Thank you.